All right, this is big. This is big. What happened a few days back with Next.js and the corrupt middleware? So there has been a vulnerability that has been reported in Next.js, which is managed by Vercel, that allows anyone to bypass running middleware completely on any specific route and get access to the content behind that instantly. Now, most beginners and most simple projects use middleware as one of the authentication and authorization me methods, both, right? So they will authorize you in the middleware they will also try to authenticate whether that's the right user or not and if it is possible to just bypass middleware completely it's a huge security concern next just also released a cve for this and as you can see on the details over here it has already been patched in the newer versions but i can only imagine how many people will not update things right now because of this Vercel has also patched their platform itself so has Netlify and so has you know if you look at Cloudflare Cloudflare also tried to do it but then they reverted back so these platforms themselves are patched so even if you are running a vulnerable version likely on Vercel you will not be affected or on Netlify but in future if you are running it on self-hosted or you know some other place where the vulnerability is not patched then you have to update it manually let's talk about what exactly happens this this is a good block post you can go into this who is also the person who has reported this so let's talk about this in a simpler fashion right so how does web work right you have your user over here that makes a request to a server right the server and you get a response back simple enough that is the core philosophy of working with the web right now what happens in the server could be interesting because in case of Next.js, the server is broken down into two parts the middleware and the actual execution right this could be the real page real thing now what Next.js was doing is that when this request came if you have a middleware configured for that route it will hit middleware first middleware will decide whether that request needs to be honored or not based on whatever cookies header values path any of that and then it will decide whether it needs to forward that request or just block it over here you know instantly now since middleware is a subset of node.js or more commonly node.js itself now what you can do is a lot of things over here right so you can do db calls even though you should not you can do fetch requests you can do i don't know any io operation anything basically so one of the things that you can do over here is fetch requests right and what is possible over here that is what i understand maybe i'm wrong but what is possible over here what Vercel figured out that okay maybe you can do fetch request to other routes on the same website right so over here for example if you have api slash get user data on the same website on which middleware is also running so in order to protect this route from recursively keep on calling middleware right because if by chance you have configured api get user data to also be part of middleware you don't want to keep recursively invoking the middleware right otherwise it will just exhaust your bandwidth or whatever it will time out or stuff so in order to prevent this from happening what next.js does is that it includes a flag a header known as x middleware sub request right so any request that the middleware itself is making includes this header now the thing is that when this request appears here in a legit use case you have a middleware here again or the server or whatever so even before middleware in order to invoke middleware or not you also need another smart server right so you have a smart server even in front of middleware which sees that okay you have x middleware sub request header so i should not invoke that i should just directly get you the whatever you are requesting because it's coming from middleware this is the core vulnerability right so this x middleware sub request header is completely unprotected so what you can do technically is in this smart infrastructure this whole thing that is available over here this technically this x middle sub request is only supposed to come from a trusted source but you can as an attacker just send this crafted x middleware sub request as a untrusted thing right so you can be the attacker over here and you can just send this request x middleware sub request your smart server will see that okay this is present again this has to be crafted properly but this is present it will just bypass the middleware which was supposed to check for cookies authentication whatever and it will just give you the access to the direct thing behind the middleware right so in this case this could be like admin slash env for all we know right so if people who are using for example providers like clerk you know or you know any any sort of providers that purely operate on middleware authentication they will be hacked 
they will be hacked to death and it would be bad for them. If you're doing any sort of simple redirection, right? If you're just using middleware to redirect non-authenticated people to login page, all you would be able to get is the shell of that page. But if you're doing like a backend validation from the front end itself, or if you're doing like a, at least a database validation as well on the page while rendering or whatever, then you are safe, right? But more often than not, if you look at these wipe coding tools, or if you, you know, look at most common beginners or how they deploy their projects, this is how they do. They will just get a bunch of tools, they will get clerk, they will get some fancy authentication, they will slap it on the middleware and they will forget because it's working, right? Which is vulnerable now, thanks to the CVE. Not anymore if you're deploying it on Warsaw or Netlify because the platforms themselves have secured it against that. But yes, but yes, this is vulnerable if you're doing it on your own, on your deployed servers and so on. So yeah, in a hindsight, it's a pretty basic bug. It, nothing very complex to execute this. It's fairly simple to reproduce as well. If you go down in this blog post, you will see how the author mentions how to reproduce this step by step. There are things that they have posted from the snippets, code snippets of Next.js itself over here. So if you see this piece of code, which is the smart server thing, right? So this is the smart server, which I was talking about. This server decides whether it needs to to run the middleware or not. And you can see over here, it gets the X middleware sub request. It sees sub request, uh, it tries to split it over here. And then if the sub request includes the middleware name, then, then do not run it, right? So you bypass it if the middleware name is in the header, right? That's it, that's the only check that you have. And he mentions that it will be pretty easy. It's perfectly guessable. It's only the path in which the middleware is located, right? So that way you can just completely bypass this whole thing and open it wide open. Right? So I'll want to take this moment to reinforce some best practices that are available. First of all, do not just do authentication authorization in middleware alone. That is a recipe for disaster. And this gives me the similar vibes as exposing your database on, you know, front end with row level security or whatever. So I would recommend keep a backend, keep a separate backend where actual authentication for anything serious happens, right? Keep a separate backend. And of course, try building your own auth. Sorry, but not sorry if you are somebody who thinks that authentic Authentication is extremely complex for you to build and maintain and you know having users in your database I think you probably should not be building that difficult app or the big app the big vision that you see in the first place if you're doing it for temporary time that's fine but you should always have a migration plan and last but not the least update your next year's right if you can just update it without making sure that it doesn't break anything because this is a serious vulnerability and if you are using middleware it's highly recommended that you update next year's not primary reasons i would say but see one of the reasons why we don't use a lot of next year's bells and whistles on fermion is because we have very little exposure to Next.js internals right now, right? So it's a black box for us also. This, this is something I covered in the last video I think I did where the author mentioned like it's a complete black box. You don't know what's happening. Similarly on Fermion, on a lot of schools that we work with, these schools are very, very important for us to keep secure, right? Real users, real data, real information is over here. So we only use Next.js primarily for doing the server side rendering. The rest of the full stack is controlled by us from caching, to backend, to authorization, even running any sort of middleware that we have on the path for any custom redirects. All of that is handled by us. Middleware on Fermion is written by us. It's not the middleware that Next.js use. We have written our own specific code for handling any sort of authentication, redirects, whatever on a middleware level. And it's only informational. So even if you are able to like, even if we were running Next.js vulnerable version right now on Fermion, you would not have been able to bypass any of this stuff. Yes, you would have been able to see the HTML or the skeleton of the internal pages, but that's not the where value is, right? So the value is actually getting the real secrets or the real stuff. So um, you would not have been able to do that because we do our, you know, we, I've, I follow what I'm teaching you guys that if you refresh this, this payload that you're seeing over here, this gets inserted dynamically, right? When the person visits the page. So this is coming from the back end itself. But anyway, I hope you understood this specific thing with Next.js. That's all for this one. If you liked it, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in the next video very soon.